Okay, so just a, one or two quick notes about writing, and then I'm going to go up to Dave. Um, certainly, you do need a good knowledge of the G C Gmail specification in order to successfully write it. There is a link there to the uh, uh, C Gmail spec uh, at geospatial.org. <clears throat> and uh, there's also a good tutorial in the Readers and Writers docs. Yeah. <clears throat> Key is setting a C GML LD name, so there's a naming convention. You have to be very, very carefully follow. So saying whether it's an LD, what level, LD one solid, <clears throat> LD two multi surface, etc. So you have to set that, and then there's a future role that that needs to be set. And the other key is making sure your IDs and parent IDs all correlate properly, so that your wall services should have a Gmail parent ID that corresponds to the building that it belongs to. And you'll see this pattern over and over, where you have an attribute setter followed by a geometry uh, property setter, and another attribute setter and a property setter. So uh, we need, typically you create the attribute and then you can set it on the geometry property setter. And just, just to note that uh, the name does need to be exact and it is, is case sensitive. And uh, as a review from the previous slide, you're going to see a lot of uh, active creators, uh, property setters, things like 3D forcers, uh, extruder, and geometry coarser. So those keep coming up again and again. Um, and yeah, here's again another snapshot of, of uh, the destination feature type and how that corresponds in the CGML itself. Uh, yeah, you can use an attribute setter, or you can even have directly set them on the destination. But I think using the transform is probably cleaner. Okay, so I won't bother you with <coughs> um, those workspaces. This is a, um, we don't have time to get into the detail, but here's the correspondence between IFC and CGML and the different representations of them, one being essentially. Uh, Constructive solid geometry, the other one being a boundary. CGML is a B rep or boundary representation. So it's a very different data model. And the workflow um, reading the IFCs. The schema mapping really is key there to, to read map from the IFC to the CGML which types and generate the correct LODs and IDs. And so this is the result. Okay, so handing it over to Dave. Okay, good morning. Um, I just want to show you some practical examples of how to write uh, city GML files. I'm going to do three examples, and it's going to range from the fairly simplistic up to a slightly more complex. Um, our first example, or I should say, before we start the examples, if you're writing city GML, there is one resource you really cannot do without, and that is if you go into the FME desktop help under the city GML reader writer, uh, there's a tutorial that writing city GML from FME. I never write a city GML file without having this open. Um, it's nice, not only does it cover the, the basics of writing the city GML, but at the bottom are some required tables to tell you the valid LOD types for your feature types and also your, your valid geometries and your feature roles. Uh, also helpful sometimes if you're setting certain attributes is the uh, CityGML specs, which also have um, sort of tables at the end to show you the various uh, uh, attribute settings. Okay, for my first example, we're going to start off with a basic SketchUp file. Uh, this is just one I've downloaded from Google Warehouse. So it's a fairly familiar building. Um, this is going to be LOD2. Since it has no windows and doors, um, that's all just represented by textures. It's essentially got two components here. It's got a ground model and a building model. We're going to grab both of these, uh, set the ground model to land use and the building model to uh, building. Uh, one interesting thing about this model is that it has, uh, in it, it is grouped. 
So it kind of has a multi-level structure that we're going to have to deal with as a part of the translation. So that's the model as it begins. Let's switch over to the workspace. So here's a fairly simple workspace. We're bringing in our SketchUp data and we're outputting to land use and building at the CDGML. All along the way, we, we do a few manipulations. Um, Dean earlier talked about the attribute creator and geometry setter pair. To make things easier for me, what I've done is I've wrapped these two in a custom transformer and set some published parameters with the um, making it a choice of all the sort of valid values. So it cuts down on the typing and on the, the amount of sort of typos you can have. Um, and then you can use this uh, everywhere where you need to set the CDGML geometry and then you can just pick your, your settings um, from the parameters. Um, this was just recently created. What I will probably do is publish it out to FME Store for you guys, so it will be available for anyone to use. Just It speeds things up a little. Okay, so getting into the purpose of the workspace. We have our city GML uh, data coming in from SketchUp. Now when FME reads a SketchUp model, it reads the entire model as a single feature. So all of the building and the ground surface is all a part of a, a single aggregate. So before, in the old days, what we do is de-aggregate, extract things we want, re-aggregate back up to make the, the, the multi-surface again. But we have some new tools in FME 2013. Uh, one of them is the Geometry Part Extractor. And this one's kind of nifty. It allows you to extract a part of your underlying geometry using a, a, a geometry query. So in this case, I'm, gonna I'm looking to extract the ground surface. So I've examined uh, the, the geometry and uh, I know that the ground surface has a trait called Google Earth Snapshot that is set to 1 and its geometry type is an FME face. So I set those tests, I make it an AND and now it's going to extract any uh, geometry that fits that condition. So after the extractor I set the city GM, GML geometry and this, unfortunately, uh, when you read a SketchUp file, it does come in with a coordinate system, and it's a custom coordinate system based on the lat long location of the SketchUp file. Um, the geometry extractor in this version of FME, when you extract a part, it actually strips that coordinate system off. This has been fixed, and that fix will be available in Service Pack 2. But in the meantime, all I've done is I've reset the coordinate system to the SketchUp coordinate system 0, which is always the name of the generated coordinate system. So that's just to restore the coordinate system on my output. So that's the land use, and it's very simple land use. I haven't set any categories uh, on the land use at all. The second string is for the building. Now I use a copy of that first geometry extractor, but in this case, I remove that ground surface using exactly the same query and I'm saying okay in the, in the first one I've extracted it to use here I'm saying get rid of it we'll just keep all the building information. The uh, next thing I do is as I showed in the, the SketchUp model is grouped so it has a kind of multi-level aggregate geometry uh, which really does not fit well with basic building geometry in CityGML so I use a de-aggregator and I tell the deaggregator to flatten all levels. So it's going to take all this multi-level aggregate structure and just split it all down to its component faces. And then I aggregate it back up together into a single multi-surface. So I've, I've essentially flattened out the entire model. And then again, we set the, the city GML geometry. Now in this case, I set an LOD to multi-surface and it's the, the, the basic building geometry. So it's going to be a city object member. Uh, on the land use, I essentially did the same thing. So now when you run this, the output is essentially that. This is this I'm using the Land Explorer, Autodesk Land Explorer City GML Viewer just to show you what our output looks like in, in, in other people's products. So we can see that your City GML output looks pretty much exactly the same as our SketchUp input. 
So I call that a successful translation. 